Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Rachel and this is Pastor Greg. We're pastors at Grace Lutheran Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We're glad that you're with us this morning. If you've not yet found it, you can locate our worship guide for this morning on the website gracerockhill.com and that will help you uh, worship along with us this morning. We begin our worship service with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we often ignore your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We misuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others, even though you have welcomed us. We continue to sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you with renewed faith and righteous lives. Amen. Amen. Beloved, in God's unlimited mercy, we are given peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained grace upon grace, and our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that we may overflow with joy and freely share the blessings of your kingdom as we faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary holding it in and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior, and therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our psalm. Our psalm will be read antiphonally by whole verse. Um, I'll read the light face print, and if you'll all please join with Pastor Rachel for the bold. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. 
I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you, at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew, the tenth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than the sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's household. 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The last few weeks have not been great for me. I'm approximating because I don't actually know how long things have been rough. The days melt together as we weave our way through the pandemic life. I feel like I'm running out of steam for our current situation. At the beginning of our switch to online ministry, we were running in crisis mode and ideas were flowing and resources were pouring in and we were making plans. But it's been three months, and you can't live on adrenaline that long. However, just because I'm running out of steam doesn't mean this situation is ending. In reality, we're probably not even halfway there, and that's hard to reckon with. Council has been meeting weekly to discuss what we should do in regards to in-person activities. So that we can be as informed as possible for these conversations, I have spent hours looking at COVID information and it isn't pretty. Those numbers make me sad and worried. And when I go out into the community and see so many faces without masks, I'm even more discouraged. Just living during COVID is hard. And as if COVID weren't enough, the sins of racism and injustice have been looming large in our country. Brutality and murder and hate are flashing across our screens more than I can ever remember seeing at once. I'm seeing the pain of our brothers and sisters of color, and I am convicted in my ignorance. How can I have been unaware of how deep this sin goes? And so I'm trying to learn more, to open my eyes more, to be more involved and informed. And that is also crushing because what I'm learning is hard to face. Injustice runs deep, and it's going to take a lot of work and probably a lot of time to correct it. So yeah, it's been a hard few weeks. And then this week, it was my turn to preach. When I looked at the scripture for today, well, you heard it. It's a hard gospel lesson. Jesus continues his message from last week, telling his disciples they're going to face opposition. He says he has come bringing not peace, but a sword. Jesus says families will be set against each other, and he says there are a lot of ways that his disciples might not stack up. This is the gospel, the good news we're given today. At first I looked elsewhere for a sermon focus. I turn to the first lesson. Jeremiah is lamenting to God that he has to go and tell people this hard news, violence and destruction. It's God's word, which God gave to Jeremiah, but Jeremiah does not want to tell it. People don't want to hear it. Some people are even hoping bad things will happen to Jeremiah because they don't like what he's saying. Jeremiah is not happy about the whole thing. And he makes this clear to God. Jeremiah, I feel you. This gospel is not what I wanted to preach today either. It is hard to preach God's word, which we know is good news, when it sounds a lot like bad news. It's hard to preach when God's word challenges us, makes demands of us, and tells us things are going to be uncomfortable. No one wants to hear that. No one wants to say it, but here we are. And just as God's word burned in Jeremiah's bones like a fire that he had to let out, God's word will not stay hidden away. As a pastor, it's my call to share God's word, even when it's hard. As a baptized child of God, it is my call and your call to share God's word, even when it's hard. So, knowing it is our call to proclaim the gospel, mine and yours, we look again to the lesson in Matthew. And because we aren't turning away or ignoring what God has said here, we have the opportunity to ask, what about this is good news? 
because the gospel is good news, even when it sounds like bad news. Jesus is telling his disciples about the future of their ministry, teaching them how to be disciples, to live like their teacher. And Jesus knows that there are people who do not like the teacher or what the teacher is saying. Those who are upset apparently even call Jesus Beelzebul, the prince of devils. Jesus tells the disciples they will hear this and probably even worse as they go out to share his teachings. But Jesus tells them not to fear those who speak against them because, as he says, nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing that is secret will not become known. The truth, God's truth, will prevail. They will be vindicated. The bad news, that they might be ridiculed and hated, will be overcome by the good news of God's word being true. The next part is more threatening, more fearsome. Jesus says, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Jesus knows he will be killed by those who can kill the body. And he knows that his disciples will face threats on their lives too. That is not a small challenge to spreading God's word. But Jesus knows as well that God will raise him from the dead and his disciples will be raised to new life too. If God cares for sparrows, how much more does God care for God's people? The bad news, death, will be redeemed in the good news of resurrection. The disciples need not fear what Christ will overcome. Those few parts are easier to understand. Jesus points out the good news for us. But the message is not as simple. Jesus says, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Not only does this sound like bad news, it doesn't sound like the Jesus we know at all. The Lamb of God comes with a sword. The one who reconciles us to God and one another will set families against each other? How can this be good? We know that Jesus did not come to bring us harm, so even this sword must be for our good. Swords cut things, cut things away, and we have plenty that needs to be cut away. Our sins cling to us and we need to be freed from them. Acknowledging our sin and separating from it can be painful. It might seem like a sword cutting away part of who we were. But it is good news that Jesus has come to cut away those sins that weigh us down. He will not leave us alone in the delusion, thinking we've found peace, but in fact are just mired in complacency. And when we are freed from those sins, when we see the brokenness and reject it, we may find ourselves at odds with those who have not yet recognized the good news of the sword, at odds even with people we love. The good news is that Jesus does not stop working. Jesus continues to freeze free all of us from our sins. And again, as he told the disciples, nothing that is covered up will not be uncovered, and nothing that is secret will not become known. God's truth, the good news, will prevail. It's bad news that so much racism and injustice are present in our world. But it's good news that so many people are paying attention, some for the first time, seeing these sins and beginning to work for justice. It's good news that things have gotten to a breaking point. Sometimes that's what it takes for change to come and for us to see how God is bringing good news out of bad. One small example of this shift towards justice is this year's Juneteenth, which we celebrated on Friday. This is the celebration of the day that all people finally became free in our country. In 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the last enslaved people in Texas were told about their freedom. 
Many of us have only recently learned about Juneteenth. I myself learned about it just two years ago at the ELCA Youth Gathering while visiting Emancipation Park. This holiday shines a light on the sin of slavery in America. It recognizes that even after slavery was struck down, it took several more years for freedom to reach everyone. That doesn't feel like good news. That's a shameful part of our American history, and maybe that's why this holiday isn't taught the way it should be. But Juneteenth also celebrates the day that America lived into the identity we had proclaimed, that all people would be free. And this year I saw more Juneteenth celebration than I ever have. Our city celebrated it, finding ways even despite COVID. Many voices encouraged people to learn about this day, to know why we should celebrate it. And when we recognize our history honestly, we can learn from what harm has been caused, do better, and honor the good that has come of it. Justice can be celebrated even while we're still working towards it. Today, we hear good news and bad news and the promise from Jesus that the good news will prevail. And part of the good news is that we can be honest about the bad news. Jesus is honest about the hardships that discipleship will bring. Following God requires dedication to truth and righteousness, which the world is likely to fight. And because he's honest about what's coming, Jesus can provide reassurance and direction. Jeremiah is honest about how hard it is for him to keep going with God's work. He laments to God, knowing God can handle his feelings and that God can also offer him strength and guidance. We can be honest about our struggles when sharing and living out God's word is hard. When we share our hardships, we can support each other and do the work better and stronger. When we share our laments with God, we have the chance to feel God's presence with us and recognize the gift God gives us to press on. Whatever your last few weeks have been like, I hope you've shared them with someone. And if you need someone to share with, I invite you to share with me. God gives us one another so that we can walk together, so that we can lament the hard things together, and so that we can share the good news together. And God is with us in all of these things. God brings good news out of bad. God's good news will prevail. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day.
we now profess the faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expanse of God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another, that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for animals and their habitats. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God. Sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God. You promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your words of justice, liberate those who are oppressed, and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Help us see your image in every person. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you desire for all of your children to be well and whole. Bring comfort to those who are in distress and health to those who are ill. We pray especially for Amy, Chris, B, Art, Jill, Emily, Kathy, Eric, Ellen, Doug, Mike, Ralph, Kim, Buck, Pauline, Mary, Derice, Jennifer, Frank, Bill, Madeline, Ed, Earl, Barbara, Stephen, and Susan. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, especially the Emmanuel Nine Martyrs, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. If you happen to be uh, watching on your own, give somebody a call. Let them know that God's peace rests with them and between the two of you. This is a wonderful time to share that, that good news that we heard about uh, in the sermon today. Now's the time when we focus on our offering. We give you thanks for all those who have been contributing to our mission, uh, whether it's sending something in through the mail or automatic drafts, or you've been uh, using our online giving platform. We thank you for your faithfulness and your, your, your good stewardship. Um, please continue to give in those ways, even if uh, you're one of the folks who is going to be trying out our in-person worship uh, here coming up soon. We invite you to really focus on, on those other things that you would need to bring with you, like, you know, the chair and the mask and whatnot, um, making sure you signed up. Uh, that way we don't have to also worry about money and needing to count it and, you know, further exposing folks. 
Also, uh, a special thanks to those of you who have been sending pictures. Those have been wonderful. They have really enhanced uh, my worship experience and, and many people's. Um, we are going to stop with those after this week, uh, at least for a little while, so that we can really focus on the production side of things. But uh, it has been a wonderful offering as well. And um, well, you know what? If you still have some, send them into the office. We'll find a way to make a slideshow or some such thing. Uh, but, but thank you very much for that. So our worship service continues with our anthem.
us pray together. Merciful God, our gifts seem small, but we know you make up them in abundance, just as you do with our entire lives. We long to be fed at your table once more, but in this time of distance, draw near to your children, and let us feast on the gospel hope you freely share with the world. Accept the offering we bring, and strengthen us for service in your name. For the sake of the risen Christ, amen. United as one church and deployed across a great distance, we unite our voices and join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have just a few announcements this morning. As Pastor Greg mentioned, we intend to add in-person worship next weekend, in addition to online worship. Uh, to come to in-person worship at Grace, you must sign up. You can do that through the e-news or by calling the office, and you'll find details about that entire process in the e-news. If you do sign up to come in person, you should receive an email at the end of the week, likely Friday, with some extra information. Uh, and if anything changes in regards to our plans, we'll be sure to let you know. For those of you who continue to worship online, that's great. We will continue to have all of our worship resources online. You'll be able to find them on Facebook, on Facebook Premiere, on YouTube, on the Grace website. You'll be able to continue worshiping in the same way, and that allows us all to find the way to worship that is safest for us. Council will meet tomorrow evening, Monday, to continue the conversation about how God is calling us to be in this time, and we invite your prayers as always. Now we receive God's blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you this day and unto eternal life. Amen. Amen.
peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. We're glad that you are here with us to worship this morning. If you are watching on Facebook Premiere or earlier in the day, we invite you to come to our Facebook Live Coffee Hour at 11 a.m. That'll be on our Facebook page. We hope that we'll see you there for some fellowship and conversation. Thank you.